We're going straight to a guest, not just any guest. No. Hall of Famer, Leaf Great, former teammate of mine, stood up at my wedding. How nice was that? Is that right? That's (laughs) incredible. Welcome to the show. Welcome in, Leaf legend, Matt Sundin. Not just any Matt Sundin, author Matt Sundin. Here it is. Ready? October 22nd is the official sale. Tomorrow it kicks off. It'll be officially on sale for you. Home and Away by Matt Sundin with Amy Stewart. Matt's welcome to the show, man. How are you? Very good. This coffee is too hot. (laughs) (laughs) Too hot and and not good. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry about that. Well, listen, it's not as hot as you are right now because you are very much in demand, my friend. Um, First of all, like, Author, how, how's that sound? I know Hall of Famer. I know Leaf Great. I, I know call me top I mean, scorer. Amy Stewart is the real author, but <laughs> I, I did write some of the stuff myself. But it, it's fun, and uh, I, I, you know, said if I don't do the book, we started last summer. It's never going to happen. So, uh, and my, I get no respect at home from my kids anymore. <laughs> and I figure if they can read this book, they're going to say, you know, he, he was a pretty good hockey <laughs> player, like in three or five years. They, they don't care at all. They don't. They don't ask no. now. No. Did you find it uh, almost therapeutic to go through the past and sort of uh, take a, I guess, a zoomed out look at your life? It, it was. And, and uh, you know, we are a little wiser as we get older. And uh, just looking back when you have your own kids, mm-hmm. looking back at childhood, what my parents did for me and my brothers. And I, if I do half of the stuff they do now, I'm, I'm going to do well. So I was very fortunate. And you know, you realize nowadays not everybody gets that kind of support. We were very fortunate. We talk about that in the upbringing. You know, one of the most common questions I get is, you know, you know, people think there's a secret sauce to, you know, being a hockey player or, or make, have a career that, that I had. And it's not really. So we try to reflect on that. And, and then also, obviously, my 13 years with the Leafs, being the captain for 11 years, there's a lot of stuff with coaches and things you go through. But I, I think that, uh, you know, fans of the Toronto Maple Leafs and people that care about the team will find interesting. So we decided to do it. We know you're on a tight schedule here and we only have you for a few minutes. So let's just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, some key points in the book. And one of them is around the captaincy of being a Toronto Maple Leaf and yep. what it means, not only for you, but the history of it. Uh, it came to light once again this summer yep. when they uh, made the change from yep. John Tavares uh, to Austin Matthews, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I did find it fascinating reading your story about, you know, how Borea Salming, great leaf, yeah. um, Swedish, uh, leader for, for all of us, uh, yeah. uh, in, in that generation really influenced you the most with yeah. your decision. Now I knew of, of Borea growing up as one of my heroes as well, but I always thought, Matt's when when Boria turned down the captaincy, yeah. it was because you know he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't in a position to really lead off the ice. I yeah. knew Boria like like to have a good time, and yeah. maybe that maybe held him back a little bit. Yeah, but it didn't because in your book I learned that he ultimately didn't take it because he just he never saw himself as a as a as a captain. Yeah, based on the fact that he wasn't from here. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. And uh, he was the first guy I called when when the Leafs asked me, "Do you want to, you know, we want you to be the, the captain for the Toronto Maple Leafs." I, I immediately called Boria, and he he said right away, "Well, you have to accept it." I said, "Why is that?" And he said, "You know, it's a it's such a you know the biggest hockey fran- franchise in the world. Being the captain for the Toronto Maple Leafs is such an honorable." role to have, even though it's just a letter stitch on your sweater, but it means so much. And he also regretted not accept, accepting the captaincy. So it, it was an easy decision for me after talking to Boy. And how did that change how you viewed yourself or the pressure? Uh, you know, and I, I ask you that in light of uh, looking at Toronto's situation with Tavares yeah. having it, then Matthews. How does it change your day-to-day as an yeah. athlete with the Leafs? Well, I, I was fortunate in my career i play with you know joe sakic great captain great leader uh doug gilmore uh you know nicholas lidstrom i play with he was assistant for detroit he was the captain when they won the stanley cup the first i think european captain to win the stanley cup and all those guys 
all great leaders lead by example. And I think I, it, I think I knew, and I, I was a captain from a 10, 12 years of age. I enjoyed feeling like I, like I got more responsibility. It made me a better player. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys don't want that. I understand that. But for me, it had always been there that I felt that I performed better, feeling that I had a little bigger responsibility. And so it made me a better player. What about uh, dealing with the media? Because unlike anywhere else, with the, maybe the exception of Montreal, but yeah. was it always in your back of your mind and even Boreas, knowing what kind of attention uh, the players yeah. get, particularly the ones that wear the C in this town, and how no, no player should ever take it lightly. And I think your line in the book was uh, when it comes to the Toronto media that uh, – understanding that uh, I think it was panic <laughs> is good for their business. <laughs> which, which pretty much sums up our show with Sammy McKee. Especially the tagline of right? our show. No, but, but I think, and, and I think all players eventually ha- have to understand too that over a long season, I don't care if you're the Stanley Cup winner at the end of a year or not or missing the playoffs, all teams go through adversity, right? Mm-hmm. And all teams going to have losing streaks and – Things are not going the way you should. But in Toronto, it's on an, almost on an everyday basis. It's different than playing for Carolina or Tampa where you can go a few weeks and, and teams are struggling and no one really is that worried about it. But in a great market like Toronto where you have the fans so committed to the team, they care about the team and, and, and media are reporting about it, it is different. But I think my strategy was I think the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? And... Sometimes the media portrays like this team will win the Stanley Cup this mm-hmm. year because they're that great. Or even, even uh, you know, like, like you guys are saying, the panic and, and team is not as good as we're hoping. They're not going to win the Stanley Cup. So I think you just have to realize that and, and have that uh, relationship with, the, with you with, to keep sane and not worried about what's going on in the media on an everyday basis. Yeah. As I'd like to hear a little bit about um, being a Swedish player in the NHL, um, you know, having – played hockey enough. I know that the Swedish guys tend to go to dinner together and yeah. often most of them, I think, go home to Sweden after their careers and remain tied to home. Yeah. Um, you know, even more so than I think a lot of North American yeah. players who move around. And explain that connection, I guess. Well, I, for me, I, I think it was important to make sure that even we had a lot of Swedish teammates, but I, I want to make sure that we don't just hang the Swedes together or whatever you got, Canadians, Russians. I mean, we have so many different nationalities, and, and that's the way it is all around the league. Yeah. Uh, and, and most players went home for the summertime, I think. And if you played in Toronto, it was a good break. You don't see your family and friends over the whole, the whole winter. Um, but Swedish players, I mean, when I broke into the league, there were, I think there were 17, 18 Swedish players in the league. Right. And today it's over 100 uh, some of them have very big roles in the league. There's a lot of captains out there. So Swedish hockey, and I think Boris Salming was the guy that really paved the way to realize, NHL management realized, you know what? Swedish players can, can handle the, the North American game that is more intense on the big ice surface. So, yeah. We are joined by Matt Sundin, Hockey Hall of Famer, Leaf Great, in studio. And the book is called Home and Away with Amy Stewart, officially on sale tomorrow. So grab your copy. Christmas is coming. It's a great read. Uh, Again, enjoyed a lot of parts of it, including the time that uh, Ty tried to bluff his way onto your line. (laughs) (laughs) And and Pat Quinn called you over and said, uh, so I hear uh, Ty wants, uh, you want Ty on your line. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh. What happened there? Ty telling the coach? Pat, Pat show, shook his head there and, all right, let's start practice. Just before the practice started, we're, we're skating around the rink and, Pat, can I talk to you? I said, sure. I said, you want to play with Ty? I said, no. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think so, but it was in my office. Yeah, he's going to kill me now when I see him. There. Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's in the book. Me too. So, yeah. Me too. Um, just in terms of that whole relationship, uh, e- e- even with Pat Quinn, Right as a captain, and and now we're seeing Craig Berube, and maybe some similarities between Berube and and Pat, where they're not long on uh, long-winded answers, but they're they're short yeah. and to the point. Um, 
just in terms of now Austin, have you talked to Austin about captaincy at all? Has he come to you for advice? Yeah. What would you say to him? Because there is a fine line, Matt's, where you, you, you don't want to change too much, but you have to change enough so you show that it was worthy of the decision. Is that fair to say? Yeah. You know, I would say Pat Burns and, and Pat were Pat Quinn were both, you know, they had the presence in the room, right? They came in. They didn't have to say anything. I think Craig Berube has the same thing. Uh, and I agree with you that the relationship between the captain and, and the coach is, is good. The, the coach wants to get a feel for what's going on in the group and, and what, what things do we have to change and what things are, are doing well. And, and to me, I haven't talked to Austin about the captaincy, but I, I watch him and he's, a, he's you know, as good as a, of, as a person off the ice as he is on the ice. You know, he's one of the best players in the league and he is a leader and the guys in the room is going to follow him. And for him... Just keep playing the way you have. And, and you look at all the great leaders, you know, our names, Joe Sackick, the Gilmores, Nicholas Lidstrom, uh, Steve Eisenman, Scott Niedemeyer, all lead by example. Hardworking guys. They do what they're supposed to do on the ice, and the rest of the group's going to follow them. So he's going to do great. And I do remember that for sure, that your, your number one responsibility as a captain is to go out there and lead by example. Yep. But... You know, looking back at your career, was there was there times maybe in certain areas that you you thought maybe, man, if I can go back and do it all over again, I would have <laughs> said this or done that or been more involved, well, less involved. I got criticized, and you know, in your prime, obviously you you sign long term deals. You're in your prime, and the team wants to extend your contracts and all that. So, uh, and maybe something Swedish, but obviously you also. And and I got reminded of that. Like you, you have power right now to actually say. I think we need these things, assets to be able to contend for a Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. I wasn't very vocal, but I also always thought that my job as a captain is to be as good as I can be myself. Try to get this team to be as good as we can be on the ice. And you know the the chain of command is is you know president down to general managers and coaches and all that. So I didn't get involved a lot with that, and I. I reflect on it. I wonder if it would have changed anything in, in a big way. So just different different ideas about that. So, like, you know, you're talking about maybe influencing things um, beyond your actual job, but you recognize that you had a voice to have yeah. some say in those areas. Do you feel now, like, is there more you would want to do in the league in retirement? I know that's a <laughs> roundabout way of getting to it, but. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll see eventually in the future. I think, I mean, we live in Sweden right now, and, and I have family and kids. Uh, I was very, it was very nice to get invited by Bradford Living to mm -hmm. training camp this year, three weeks back, to be a little closer to the group and the guys. So we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. And just overall, from what you've watched so far, uh, you, you do get a different feel for this club uh, in, in the last was, 12 months? Yeah, it was really nice to be close to the, to the, to the guys during training camp, and I, I'm very impressed with... Everything with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think they've made some great additions on defense. I think their goaltending looks great. Forwards, we know they're, they're elite in the league. So I'm, I'm very excited. I think the Toronto Maple Leafs fans should be very excited for this season. I, I have great expectations for this team. Matt, I know we have to let you go in a minute or two, but just want to ask you about being Kipper's teammates. You guys ever fight in practice or anything? <laughs> I have. I have a I have a memory from Nick Kipper. Oh when, boy, when my first year actually, and yeah. he played for Hardware. Hard for Whalers. Yeah. And I skated by the bench. And he said something. I can't even say it here. <laughs> the show, he gave me one of the first. And it actually, I was 19 years old. And I still remember it. Wow. <laughs> but then we, he, he, he did struggle. He struggled so with that bad. a little bit. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> exactly. He, he gave me struggled. a compliment. And he remembers himself. Yeah. He remembers himself, yeah. And then he ended you up teammates thought, and made it work. That's I great. thought this guy, this 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 19 year old is going to embarrass me, so I, I better get into his kitchen real quick. Get here. a shot early. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. All right. Well, listen, Matt, we know you're off uh, running a uh, few more uh, appearances. I'm sure, we'll see you at the game tonight. But yep. uh, best of luck uh, with home and away. And uh, thanks for coming in, pal. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for time. having me, guys. Appreciate it.